Hey folks, welcome back to The Gun Collective. Let's get right into this video. Have you ever heard someone say, my $300 scope is just as good as a $2,000 scope? The point they're trying to make, really, is that they don't think there's any difference between low and high dollar scopes. As long as you can hit the target or animal you're shooting at, what does it really matter? Well, does it really matter? That's what we're trying to figure out today. So how much do you have to spend before that law of diminishing returns kicks in? Leave us a comment below with your thoughts on that. We'd love to hear what you have to say. So today, I'm gonna to show you a couple different scopes at different price ranges, but each with basically the same feature set. We're gonna evaluate them, not really to determine which one is quote unquote better, but to try and determine where's that line of diminishing returns. And also, what do you actually get in return for spending that extra money on, let's say, a $1,700 scope over a $700 scope? And before we get into today's video, I want to give a quick shout out to Axel EarPro. These guys make some of the best stuff that I'm aware of. This is the Ghost Strike Extreme, the GS Extreme. And if you use our link in the description, you get a massive discount. These units, they're Bluetooth. They are... Uh, sound amplifying, sound deadening. They've got different tips to fit different ear sizes. And overall, they're just rad. So go check out them, the Axel GS Extreme, at the link down in the description. So first up, we have the Warhawk by Swamp Fox. This is a 5 to 25 by 56 millimeter precision rifle scope. It has a 34 millimeter main tube, glass etched reticle, first focal plane. It's got clear glass locking turrets with a zero stop, and it costs just under $700. In the box, you also get short and tall magnification throw levers, set screw and a wrench for those throw levers, flip-up lens caps, honeycomb anti-reflective device for the objective lens, a kill flash, basically. You get a scope cloth, a battery, you get your product and your reticle manuals, and you get a three-inch sunshade. I personally used the Swamp Fox for some plinking in my backyard, but I also visually tested it at 50 yards on the 1951 US Air Force optical resolution test chart, which I'll show you in a second. I also tested it out to about 850 yards and 375 yards, and also at 100 yards in low light conditions. So here's that test chart I was talking about. Think of it like going to the optometrist to have your eyes checked. You know when they make you cover one eye and read the smallest letter you can? Well, this is a chart specifically designed to measure the resolution and clarity of optical devices, like microscopes, but also optics on firearms. In the simplest of terms, you look at it through your scope and you see what's the smallest number and set of three bars that you can clearly see. Now, before I show you the results, I have to preface this by telling you that what you're seeing on the screen is not quite as good as what I saw with my naked eye while doing these tests. I'm using a uh, scope cam called the Trigger Cam. It records at 4K, uh, but it also has a set of lenses and mirrors that aren't as good of quality as the scope lenses and mirrors and glass. Also, there's, a, there's YouTube. When you upload your video to YouTube, they also downgrade the footage quality so that it runs more smoothly on their platform. So I'm gonna show you the images and then I'll point out how much better it actually was with the naked eye. So basically, after all this is said and done, you're still just gonna have to take my word for it. We're doing our best here, guys. So I set the optical resolution chart at 50 yards for each of the scopes tested. First is the Swamp Fox. And what I want you to pay attention to is the smallest number and set of three bars that you can clearly see. You might be able to see the number six clearly here, but can you actually see the detail of the three bars? For the Swamp Fox, I'm able to clearly see the number three and all the bars and spaces in between. If I go to the number four, I can clearly see the number, but the bars start to blend together. So the Swamp Fox scores a three in this section. Let's call it the fourth section. I also want you to notice the somewhat blurred edges around all the numbers and bars, even at the largest sections. Also notice the purple and blue chromatic aberration around the edges of the white paper. Lots of this CA or chromatic aberration is an indication of lower quality glass. Now let's switch to the other scope. This is the Tractoric ELR rifle scope. It's a four and a half to 30 by 56 millimeter. It has a 34 millimeter main tube, glass etched reticle, first focal plane, high definition shot glass, locking turrets with zero stop, 
and it costs just under $1,700. So the features are almost identical to the Swamp Fox. Now when we look at the U.S. Air Force resolution chart, I can clearly see the number 5, but the bars start to blend together. So I can call this scope a number 4 in section 4. Now if you've been paying attention, that's just one number better than the Swamp Fox for an additional $1,000, but there's more to it than that. Look at the detail and the crispness of the line edges on the largest numbers. Here's the tract side by side with the Swamp Fox. Take a look at the chromatic aberration, that purple hazing. You don't see it in the tract optic here. I want to show you a couple more side-by-side -side examples. This first one is at 375 yards of a horse barn across a field. Swamp Fox on the left, tract on the right. One of the first things you notice about the Swamp Fox is that purple chromatic aberration again. Look at the line edges and notice that they are generally blurry. Limbs and leaves, look at the area of tree branches that's all grayed out here and it looks kind of two-dimensional with the Swamp Fox. But you have some depth of field and clarity gains with the track toric. Check out that small gray tree on the right side of both images. Definitely a difference. One last side-by-side -side comparison, Swamp Fox left, tracked on the right. This is a drive-in movie structure from about 850 yards away. Those white things are large speakers, I believe. Now, at first glance, this image favors the Swamp Fox, and I would agree if all you're looking at is the brightness of those speakers. Actually, it's the lower level of contrast in the Swamp Fox making the overall image appear slightly brighter. But pay attention to the sharp details on the edges of things. Even though the additional contrast helps create that three-dimensional look with the tract optic, it looks overall a little bit darker. Now, I can tell you with the naked eye that they were very similar in this test with the edge going to the tract because of the additional res resolution. Case in point here is that large set of trees in the bottom right of both of these images. There's a lot more detail in the tract optic. All right, guys, let me give you a summary of this, because you could come away from this going, oh, the tract, I noticed, you know, that the tract looked better in some of those pictures he had up there on the screen, so the tract must be better. Well, not necessarily. It comes down to your particular budget and your context and all of that, right? Like, just because the tract shot glass is a higher quality glass than what is in the Swamp Fox, based on my testing and just the fact that shot glass is better than glass that is not shot glass. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that. Um, the resolution, the detail, I tried to show you as best I could the difference. But what you have to ask yourself is, what's my budget and what's my context? Is the Swamp Fox at $700, is it good enough? It, it, does it reach that that law of diminishing returns, right? Like where after you spend, if you spend more than that for, you know, the typical hunter that's, let's say, hunting inside of 500 yards, well, that guy might not need a $1,700 optic or a $3,500 optic or higher than that, right? He might spend $700 on a Swamp Fox and it's going to be the best scope he's had for the rest of his life. That could be that could be the case. I mean, it is a very nice optic. You know what I mean? Like the glass is clear and bright out to the distances that I checked it. I would not have any trouble engaging targets in my testing out to 850 yards. I'm sure it would be great past that. I probably wouldn't pick the Swamp Fox for a precision rifle series style um, competition rig, but I definitely would pick it for 22 long rifle competition. We're still shooting these 22 long rifles out to three, 400 yards. You gotta be able to see clearly, but you also have to be able to parallax down very, very closely. And this guy parallaxes down to 15 yards, which is super helpful. But if you wanted to go something uh, a little bit more, you know, that gives you some, some higher resolution details, it's all the same feature set, right? Like, I, I think I made that pretty clear. The feature set between these two scopes is almost identical. The only difference, really, you get a little bit more magnification in the tract, even though I 
shot all of this through the scope video at 20 power because they both share 20 power um, and it it gives you like the fullest brightest image that you're going to be able to see you know once magnification goes all the way to the top you start to shrink in that eye box a little bit things start to darken around the edges it's not as good a representation and i knew that i'd have to go through cameras and all this kind of stuff so 20 power made sense um, so for your extra money for seventeen hundred dollars so right like a thousand dollars extra on the track you get five extra power right the track goes up to uh, 20, uh, sorry, 30. The track goes up to 30 and the Swamp Fox goes up to 25. So you get that five extra power level and you get the HD shot glass uh, in the track, which I think I was able to show you through the images that that means a little bit more resolution and detail and contrast out to all the different ranges. So for me, the game I play in Precision Rifle Series and those types of, of competitions, this is going to be just a better tool for the job. And sometimes the better tools for the job that you're doing cost more. You be the judge for yourself. Uh, I'm telling you, the Swamp Fox is a great optic. It would be best suited, in my opinion, to, to put it on a 22 long rifle if you're into 22 long rifle competition. Um, it still will work absolutely flawless on a long range precision rifle out to the ranges that you are able to engage targets with it. It will have a point because of the quality of glass, and I think it's decent quality glass, but it will have a point at which it struggles for you to be able to make out targets through Mirage um, and see edges of targets and, and things like that, maybe at low light or in shadows it's going to struggle eventually and so you just have to answer that question for yourself it's a good scope i think it's worth every penny um, i think it definitely punches above uh, the price range for sure especially with all the extra accessories that they give you in the box so thanks for watching today make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, if you're not already subscribed to tgc hit that bell notification icon so that you don't miss any of the videos as they come out and stay tuned for more great videos thanks for watching